I usually don't do scary. I'm not into scary movies. I'm not into uh -huh. any of that. Even like when I did Boy Next Door, like the thriller type stuff, like. Nah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to give me your name. Ryan, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Man, I'm I'm feeling blessed right now. I just had a, a baby daughter about 10 oh, days. Oh, really? When? Yeah, uh, it was uh, January 7th. Oh, wow. So, like, really recently. <laughs> are you getting any sleep or what? Man, this girl's been a, a freaking joy. She she actually sleeps throughout the whole, whole night. Um, uh -huh. Any kind of, like, gas or any problems that she's going through, she handles it on her own so no nah, i've i've been enjoying her wow is that your first child second second oh wow yeah, yeah. how old is the first one uh mateo he's almost he actually he'll be two on sunday okay wow look at that everyone yeah well i mean <laughs> this is this is a good point of your life you know i mean uh being a father and and i can only imagine there's nothing like it you know and it's incredible you got any kids or no i don't Huh? I need to find a girl first, man. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm struggling with that as is. You know? <laughs> it's all good. You'll find somebody soon in the future. <laughs> After this COVID thing, you know, release, yeah. you can actually hang out, you know? Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Well, I'm excited to talk. I've been a longtime fan of your work, and uh, it, it's cool to finally get to, to chat up with you. Are you in L.A. right now? Yeah, I'm in L.A. chilling with the family. Um, there you go. Stay in quarantine as much as we can, you know? Yeah, right. I mean, I'm in Chicago. They just actually lifted some restrictions out here, so things are going to open up more. But I have plenty of friends in L.A. I, I miss it. I haven't been in L.A. since since July. Um, so, I mean. I feel like it's ground zero for, like, COVID. I heard, yeah. <laughs> much hasn't changed, probably, since uh, you know, this whole thing started. So, but, hey, you got a movie at least to talk about, so that's something, right? Mm-hmm. Which is crazy enough, I, I did this movie before mm -hmm. my firstborn was ever uh, even ex in existence. We had just found out he was uh, coming into our world. So this was three and a half years ago. Oh, no. Yeah, two, two and a half years ago. Wow. So, yeah. yeah. So it, it initially came out from uh, being a short film, right? Then it turned into a feature? Mm -hmm. I saw it as a short film. Uh, my manager sent it to me and. Man, I mean, uh, the way Damien kind of set up everything, the, the cinematography, the, the storytelling, the aspects that he was really highlighting, uh -huh. it, it, it was like hook, line, and sinker. I was like, I got to be a part of this thing. So uh, we met up. I auditioned for him. Uh, next thing you know, we're going out to Romania and, and collaborating together. And it was just an incredible process. I can't talk about uh, how you know fun it was to work with him. You guys filmed this in Romania? Romania, yeah. Wow, what was that like? It was the first and only time I've ever done a movie where you literally go to one set and that's it. I mean, I went to maybe one other set when I have the bar scene, when I'm singing and everything. That's right. Uh, but other than that, it's it's more so just the uh, living in that world. And it was kind of nice. It was kind of like making actors go to a play because it felt familiar. You know, we Wasn't felt it like, like a warehouse or something. It seemed like it, you know, it was more like a, um, I mean, it was a studio they have out there that a uh -huh. lot of people use, uh, but we turned the studio into this kind of makeshift uh, internet sensation type deal. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was it was incredible. You know, uh, everybody a part of it was was um, pushing each other to get to the next level, and not not so much as far as like pushing each other bad, but like it was such a cohesive, you know, collaborative effort. It was it was fun to be a part of. Yeah, because there isn't that many of you, like, in the movie to begin with, but, like, everyone's in the scene pretty much in every scene together in that one space. I mean, you, Kyle, Alex, like, that's pretty much the majority of the, the cast right there. It all takes place in that one space. I mean, did you like it that way, that everyone was kind of, in a sense, enclosed together and, and working with each other in the same kind of, not only space, but almost in the same scenes together? Because continually without any like you know different locations and different cast changes and it, this is all everyone's right at the spot right there 
Yeah, man. I mean, it was fun. Like I said, it, it kind of brings it back to a play. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the closest I've ever come to a play, and I've always been kind of scared to even go into plays. But um, now that I've kind of had a feel for it, uh, man, I kind of like it more so than anything else. It was we we we'd run over the scenes a couple times between Alex and Kyle, and and uh, man, they're, they're they're juggernauts on their own. You know, the what what Alex did to to make the demon come alive, and what Kyle did to like really like make it he's just a, he to me he's my favorite character of the movie <laughs> yeah i mean that's the most dude the goal in life is to have a friend like him man to be a ride yeah. or die like that because that dude does Ooh. everything for that max character I mean, yeah he went through hell and high water man especially after he finds out certain things about max that's and, right you know, past and uh, but yeah it was i can't i can't say it enough man it was it was fun and um we workshopped a lot of things until they felt natural uh -huh. um, that we ran apart and it was kind of similar to when i worked with richard linklater that's uh, right everybody wants him one of my favorites he yeah uh, he to me is a genius in the way he can get the best out of people because of how collaborative he is and how easy he is to work with mm -hmm. um, he's malleable with his, his creativity and um that's what it was with this set so all props to Damien, you know and, and everybody you know the producers and everybody because uh they really worked with us and having only three people on set carrying yeah. the freaking show is a lot to ask out of some actors, but I didn't ever feel that pressure or that weight because I just had fun with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Alex, especially too, with all that physicality in her face, you know, having to reenact that, that, that that's tough for her. She creeped the hell out of me. I mean, I was watching this movie. I'm like, damn, uh, you know, does it psychologically kind of mess with you? I know it's a movie and all, but like there's something uh, kind of freaky about exorcisms and, and just the the kind of the, the thing, the aura of it. Um, and especially when you make a set like this, where it kind of makes it come to life in so many ways with the makeup and all that. Is there this kind of an eerie feeling about it in any sense? I usually don't do scary. I'm not into scary movies. I'm not into uh -huh. any of that. Even like when I did Boy Next Door, like the thriller type stuff, like nah. I like playing it, but I don't like watching it because I don't like being scared. Uh, but yeah, Alex has some moments where I was just like, if you talk to her in real life, this is uh -huh. a complete 180 from who she was playing. So it would just be like this off and on switch with her. And when she turned it on, you were like, okay, the demon's here. We got to let her, you know, let her be who she is. And and uh, at one point in time, this is behind the scenes type stuff, uh -huh. we got really into it. And where she kind of headbutts me, that's actually real. She actually oh, headbutts yeah. me. She did it? Because I, I yeah. remember that scene, yeah. She gave me a, a black eye and actually a welt on my, my eye. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. yeah, so they had to cover it up for continuity reasons. But I was like, let's let it play, you know, but it, you know, it wouldn't stay there forever. Um, but yeah, it's just how much we were into it. And, and um, again, we didn't we didn't really question too much. It was just living in the moment as, and making it as authentic as we could. And um, that being three years ago, uh, it kind of set a process for me in my own acting world, in my own acting realm to kind of question everything again and mm -hmm. realize even though I'm 11 years in the game, like, I feel like I've just begun. Like it's just a student of the game now because of this movie alone and how it's kind of transitioned my thought process. Yeah, I mean, you've done a lot of different, like you mentioned, genres and different characters. You know, when you look at your character from Everybody Wants Them to The Boy Next Door to which you started, you know, even your first was like, you're, you're putting on your dancing moves, you know what I mean? And step up like that. That's your, your career's had a lot of different flavor in a sense. And that's kind of cool for an actor not to be typecast in any way, but, and especially with this role, it's like, I couldn't even recognize it was you at so many points, you know, because it's just so different. Uh, and do you like challenging yourself that way? Kind of going almost completely opposite of what you've done in previous work. Yeah, man. I don't like doing the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of hard for me to even wrap my head around doing any sequels or, you know, prequels or anything like that, unless it's like a really cool concept, you know, anthology type series. Um, but yeah, I like challenging myself in every aspect. And, and that comes from my athletic background and uh, with, with acting, man, I, I, I've only done a couple classes. I've done maybe one or two classes as far as an actor. Uh, wow. Everything else was file uh, trial by fire. So 
you know, pushing myself to to work with J-Lo, to work with Kyle, to work with Alex, to work with, you know, half the Why people. Stallone, right? I mean, you, you Stallone, work with some man. heavyweights. Juliet Lewis, Sly Stallone. We work with, uh, you know, Matthew Modine. Like, That's right. It's been an, an incredible journey. And I, 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 at this point in time, I just kind of look back on it and like, man, I'm so appreciative because I don't think I, I earned those spots. I think I could have done a lot more because I was learning as I was going. But knowing now what I knew, uh, what I thought I should have known back then, um, I'm only excited to, do, to see what happens in the future now. Mm -hmm. you know, whatever movies I make from the future, from this point on, it's, I now have a new appreciation for film. You know, it's crazy because it's like you lived, you're a young guy and just obviously starting kind of your adult life, you know, with, with kids and a family. But to think about, you had a, in a sense of a baseball career, then you had an MMA career, then an acting career that you're continuing on. You've had a lot in your life that you've experienced in so many different uh, genres and just different points of, of of life, uh, how does that kind of molded you into who you are now? Just going through these various experiences in life and various different things that you've accomplished and done. Uh, just kind of show me what adversity does to people. It can make you either you know question yourself so much that you just quit altogether, or you can keep on pushing. And time and consistency can allow you to, to succeed. Um, that's the only way I've succeeded at anything that I've ever done. You know, with baseball, I did, I put a lot of time and a lot of effort into it. And I got to a good point until I hurt myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it was time to make a decision. And then I made a, a very, uh, let's say a, a unique decision by trying to be a fighter. And, um, that was something that I, I feel, I, I feel most at home at. I, I love fighting. So you still do. Yeah, anytime anybody wants to scrap or anytime like anybody wants to actually like throw down, like I, I'm, I'm the first one to be like, let's, let's do it, please. Like, <laughs> I feel free in that. Uh, acting was something that everybody doubted me, you know, coming from Sacramento, like there's a lot of people out there that because they can't see the dream. Yep. They don't know how to believe. So uh, you have to have your own belief system, you have to have your own strength. And, and if any of those things have taught me anything, it's just, um, willpower and time and consistency determination all those they kind of find, uh, fall underneath the same hat that's that's a good way of looking about it I'm, I'm getting a feel for for your various interests but what are some things you like to do for fun to kind of get away I mean you mentioned still kind of liking to to scrap it up uh what are some things when you're not acting and you have some time away from from the family in a sense or even with the family what are some kind of hobbies or interests you like to do Man, it's all about it's been all about the family as of yep. the past three years. Uh, that has been my main focus above all, and I'm learning so much through my kids and and through my wife and and um, it changed who you are, didn't it? Right, the last few years, completely. Completely, I, I would actually say this last year or this year itself has changed me. I'm a completely different person. Um, it's given me a lot of humility um mm. and to really fall into that humble side of myself and, and understand that you know my environment has so much an effect on me and that i have to be cautious you know i have to i have to understand what is really giving me my growth mm. um and at the same time be aware that i do need to still continue to grow in a lot of areas of my life so uh that's where i feel freedom you know hanging out with my son you know looking at my daughter in my arms and then being with my my girl and and my extended family, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my, my mom, my dad, my brother, like those are the people that give me sanity and give me the connection I need to, to do anything I want. So as far as when I'm not acting, more than likely everybody will tell you from my family, I'm fighting. I'm trying to train. <laughs> like I'm literally, I put the gloves on, let's, let's go. That's, that's my freedom. Um, other than that, I like to paint, I like to draw, I like to write, and I like to make music. Those are the things that I, I lose myself in outside of the creative. Family. You know, I like that. It's still maintaining that creativity just in a different realm of it. Yeah. I have to stay creative. That's, that's an outlet for me. And, and uh, I have to stay expressive with my, with my creativity. So it's more so like try and translate to the, to everybody else, what I'm feeling at that moment when I'm either painting or drawing or writing or, or even fighting. Yep. That's yeah. cool, man. It's cool to learn that about you. You know, it's always, there's another side that we don't see on screen, you know, and, and the best part, you know, it's that, you know, once you have a family, it's, 
everything else is secondary. It's not, you don't live through the, oh my God, this rules. If I don't get it, it's, you know, my life's over. Everything's so secondary at that point. And you can kind of relax in your craft too and just have fun with it. You know, and even you can even see on screen um, that the pressure is kind of off because you know what really matters in life. You know, it's, it's family. Yeah, 1000%. At the end of the day, what we're doing is we're making make believe so other people can escape. Yep. You know, let's have fun with that. Let's let's enjoy that. You know, if we we touch upon hard subjects like I have done in my my other movies, you know, I did a movie about 9-11, Windows on the World, where we're mm -hmm. talking about an immigrant man coming to uh, see if his father's even alive. Like, that's a tough subject. But at the same time, I want you to escape. I want you to be empathetic towards whatever character I'm playing and, and uh really get lost, you know, forget about your own life, get lost in this character and, and just have a little fun. No question. Before I let you go, uh, you're watching that McGregor return this weekend. I mean, Ooh, one thousand percent, one thousand percent. I want to see what Michael Chandler does uh -huh. uh, and hooker. And I also want to see, uh, you know, Conor McGregor is he's, he's always followed through with his word. You know, is it he always, the beat or no? You think he's going to be the same not, without and not missing a beat? He's just going to come in there and be the destroyer that he always been. There's a mental side of the game that I don't think ever leaves you. And I think mm -hmm. that's what he has. It's the strongest thing is his fight IQ. And um, he adapts really well. So he learns very quickly. Um, I think he's going to come back, take out Poirier. And I'm going to tell you right now, like if there was ever a chance in any kind of future to fight him, that would be the absolute goal. There you I don't go. know. Two, two 20, 000, uh, 2020, you know, had Logan Paul and Jake Paul doing crazy things. Hey, right. Anything's possible at this point, you know. So, And yeah. you've overcome a lot of things and definitely navigated in life. So you never know. Keep on pursuing what you oh, love. And man, it might happen, yeah. Right? yeah, I know he's a great fighter. He's a king in his own right. I like to think that I'm a, uh, I'm a son of a couple people, Bruce Lee being one of them. People that have influenced me in my life, I like to say that, yeah, I am their son for sure. I've learned a lot from him. Bruce Lee, Conor McGregor is another one. You know, I, I, he's there's quite a few other uh, fighters in there that have molded me as a, as a man. So, um, yeah, all power to him. I, I hope he destroys and does everything that he says. There you go. Well, I had a blast talking to you. Glad to finally catch up. Uh, like I said, been following your career a long time and and excited for the future to see what's what's in it. So. Uh, thanks for taking the time to chat me up. Thank you, brother. Have a great day, man. You too. I'll connect with you down the road then. Yes, sir. Take care. All right, bye.